case you didn't know, our audience has well over doubled in just the last couple of years. And it's not because we suddenly became a hit. It's because our podcast numbers are way up. Uh, and uh, the other thing is the YouTube uh, community has discovered us. We're now in the top 1% of all YouTubers. And um, we just had our one billionth minute of our content downloaded on YouTube. One billionth minute. That's how big a deal we are on YouTube. It's pretty crazy. Now, what comes with that is, of course, that audience is much younger than some of you listening to AM radio, right? It's it's a bunch of puppies, a bunch of kiddos. And uh, so I get some of the most interesting stuff on Twitter now. Uh, my hate mail has completely changed. And so, uh, I, you know, Dave, you're such an old-fashioned, stick-in-the-mud boomer. Yeah, you got it, which is why you're listening. <laughs> so let's continue that discussion from a minute ago, since I'm an old-fashioned stick-in-the-mud boomer, and I hate all your religious stuff, Dave. That's the other one. You know, I, I'd listen to you all the time, but all that Bible stuff, man, you're just, you just, you, sh- you should leave all that out. It doesn't got anything to do with money. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, you're 22 and live in your mother's basement. Okay, so. Let's just keep in mind who's confused here. All right. Now, let's walk through it, though. Here, here's an interesting thing. Okay. Professor Bill Gals- Galston, uh, he was on President Clinton's domestic policy committee. He was one of the advisors. Found in research that if you graduate from high school, marry before having a child and have that child after age 20, this piece of research says only eight percent of the people who do so will be below the poverty level fail to do it in that sequence and 79 percent will be below the poverty level having babies while you're in high school having babies very very young having babies while you're not married all of these kinds of things it changes your probability for poverty dramatically dramatically here's another one Recent report on this topic focusing on millennials reports that 97%, 97% of those who follow the success sequence, and here's the sequence, earn at least a high school diploma, work, and marry before having children or living together, will not be poor as they enter their 30s. 97%. So, I mean, this is just statistical data which is pretty agnostic except for its conclusions only four percent of homes with a married mother and father are on food stamps at any given time but 21 percent of those cohabitating and 28 percent of single parents are on food stamps 78% of married people own their own home, 41% shacking up, cohabitating adults own their own home. So this data says that you're not winning when you get these old-fashioned moral things out of order. The data says that it's affecting your life when you just do whatever the flip you want to do. And so really be thinking about this. And moms and dads, really be coaching your kids on this. It affects the probability of poverty. It affects the probability of financial success. Well, Dave, I don't like you discussing all this Bible stuff. That's not Bible stuff. That's research. Now, the Bible does have a lot to say about these things. And I do talk about biblical finance. And I'm very open about the fact that I'm a Christian. And there's a reason I I do that. It also has an intellectual basis to it. Let's walk through that for those of you pups that don't understand this stuff or that are just twisted and you're old. I don't care. But um, here's the deal. Personal finance is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. The knowledge, the details of what you need to do to become wealthy and handle money well are not rocket science. Live on less than you make. Get on a written plan, invest, stay out of debt, have money saved for an emergency, 
don't sign debt for somebody else called co-signing. These are real basic primitive concepts. They're not deep at all. Knowing what to do is like losing weight. Most people know what to do, but we like chocolate chip cookies, which are not conducive to losing weight, I have found, personally. <laughs> so, Especially when you eat an entire line of them. You know. So um, the, 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 the point here is personal finance is more about changing and managing your behaviors, being emotionally mature, than it is about some set of head knowledge. The secrets of the rich is that there's not a secret. It's self-discipline. It's saying, I'm not going to spend like I'm in Congress. I'm not going to try to keep up with the Joneses on Instagram because they are really broke. The old Joneses next door used to be broke. The ones on Instagram are really broke. And, and so I'm not, you know, this is behavior management. So here's the thing. 100% of your behavior choices are based in your beliefs. What you believe about your future, about life, about relationships, about what you believe causes you to make the behavior choices you make. Well, I don't want to work all my life and have no fun, so I'm going to go ahead and have fun now. That's a belief. And that causes you to say, thank God it's Friday. Oh, God, it's Monday. The little man can't get ahead. That's a belief. And if you believe that the whole game is rigged and no matter what you do, you will not be able to win, why would you work hard to win? Why would you sacrifice to win? That's a belief. Beliefs affect your behaviors. Your behaviors flow out of what you believe. And what you believe about right and wrong what you believe about morals, what you believe about how you treat other people is a spiritual thing. Now, you can be Muslim, you could be Jewish, you can be agnostic or atheist, but your moral code, wherever it comes from, is a spiritual thing. So for someone like me who believes in God and believes that the Bible is instructing us on how to live well, that the scriptures are for our benefit, then some, for, for me to not integrate that into creating behaviors that cause you to win would be intellectually dishonest. It would be an incomplete picture. And so, uh, you know, I wish there was a Dave Ramsey that wasn't religious. Well, they wouldn't be a Dave Ramsey. They would just be a person that had no idea where their moral code came from. I know where my moral code comes from. I don't always do it perfectly, but I at least know what it is, and I know what the source of it is. And that gives me a guideline. It's a map to the party, baby. It's turn left, turn right. You missed your turn. Turn around and go back. you got to have a map to the party, or you're not getting to the party. And that's your moral code that causes you to make your decisions. What you believe causes you to make your decisions. And the, you know, knowledge is a part of your belief system, but most people, when it comes to money, already know they need to live on less than they make and they ought to have a written plan. Most people know running up a bunch of debt is not going to cause anything but problems. Most people know that buying a bunch of stuff to impress people you don't even like with a bunch of money that you don't even have is a bad idea. Most people know these things. But what you do then flows out of your belief system. So I spend all my time on the radio, the podcast, the YouTube. I spend all my time on stage. I spend all my time writing books and doing curriculum for Financial Peace University and so on, trying to change your beliefs. Because once I change your beliefs, I've changed your behaviors. And that's how your life gets transformed. When you say, Dave, you changed my life, I didn't. You changed your life. I just showed you how. <laughs>